Hello everybody, I'm Harry Langdon, a celebrity photographer, and today's segment is going to be about Diana Ross, and uh, many of you have asked me to tell more stories about what transpired on her shooting sessions, which were very, very creative. And so today I'm going to tell you more about the background behind these sessions. And so we begin with it. The place was my third street studio, my third in a series of studios. It was in West Los Angeles and was in the 70s, early 70s, okay, and believe it or not. And we uh, had been doing mostly fashion shooting sessions. I thought I wanted to be a fashion photographer, and which is really glamorous, beautiful women, great clothes, and really easy shooting sessions. Mostly they were black and white, by the way, sessions back in the late 60s and 70s, because the fashion magazines um, mostly showed black and white. They were easy to print, and there was a lot of competition, by the way, between the New York photographers and the West Coast photographers. So the West Coast photographers were kind of a wild and crazy creative bunch like myself. And so we, uh, when we went into shooting sessions, we went into them with like a fervor, like a creative drive to, to make sure that they had a lot of impact. So one of my first assignments for Motown records was for the Supremes. The Supremes were a recording group and they originally started with Diana Ross and Diana Ross decided to split from the Supremes and go out on her own. So my first assignment, incidentally, was photographing the Supremes, the new Supremes. The shots came out really good and Motown was really happy and everything went really well. And all of a sudden, we got a call from a man named Bob Ellis. Now Bob, I found out later, was Diana Ross's publicist and these, the way Hollywood goes, the people kind of feel their way along and see if it's, they're making the right decisions. And so Bob said, how would you, on the phone, said, how would you like to photograph Diana Ross? So I said, well, of course, it'd be great. You know, it's a follow up to the Supreme session. And he said, I'm gonna bring Diana in, have her meet you. Well, I th people say that, you know, I'm gonna bring this, this person, that person, you, you never know, okay. So I was in the middle of a shooting session at the studio, and sure enough, my assistant ran up to me and said, I think Diana Ross is in the lobby. I went, oh, come on. She said, no, Bob Ellis is there with Diana Ross. Big sunglasses, okay. So I went out and said hello, and we cordially talked to each other. And sure enough, they booked a shooting session with Diana Ross. Now, I, uh, you know, I didn't know what they're going to do, just portrait photography, what they're going to do. Okay, so I thought, well, look at, why don't we just dive into Diana or shooting session and do some good old creative fashion photography from the get-go, just to make a good impact on Motown. So the day came when we started photographing Diana, and I found out she was very self-motivated as far as like uh, being creative. She had the ability to con contort her body and do some really great poses. So from the beginning, we started doing some great creative shots, which were new to her, and also new to, in my photography world, they were just really had, had high impact. You have to remember, I studied art and I was a black and white pen and ink illustrator. I worked at Lockheed Aircraft. I wanted to be a draftsman. So black and white photography was really right up my alley, okay? So we went on doing these black and white shots on Diana. Some were glamorous and some were just portraits. And so really unique, unusual shots. And so I, I was quite happy with how things were going. And so what we did was um, pulled out all the stops and did some other really glamour fashion photography on her and went on very successfully with Motown Records. And so I, uh, but there was a point that I reached 
where I thought, oh man, we've done so many evening gowns, so much glamorous stuff on Diana. Maybe we should do something a little bit more earthy, a little bit more grounded. So these are uh, some unique color shots we did on her. And um, so the day came, this is more on Diana. This is one of my favorites, good composition on Diana. And this was a real classic picture that you see a lot on the internet. And so we have a lot of really good high impact black and whites. And then we started shooting more and more color. And so that was a pleasure. You know, obviously it was real exciting to shoot more color because I had started moving more into color photography in my work. And so sure enough, there, the day came when I wanted to do something really different on Diana. So after this shooting session here, she put back on her street clothes. Now Diana dressed her real casual when she was in her uh, just off camera, off stage. And so she came out and she had her cut off jeans on. And so the shooting session was over and what we did was, I, I thought, you know, why don't you, let's get Diana to kind of sing to her own music. So there's a song called Baby Love that was one of my favorites and she couldn't remember the words to it very well. She grabbed an apple out of our refrigerator in the kitchen in the studio and she had this apple in her hand. She was munching on the apple. I thought, oh, wow, what a great shot. So I said, Diana, sit down on the floor, okay? And my assistant, my one assistant that day, was named Bob Aaron. And I said, why don't you, Diana, why don't you sing to Bob, who was behind me, sing Baby Love. And she goes, I don't know if I can remember the words. And so she went on trying to sing, and she had this questionable look in her eyes. And she went on singing to Bob. And this, the, you know, we didn't realize what great shots we were getting until after the shooting session was over, we developed the film and at my, it's the studio, I had my own dark room. We could develop the film ourselves and, and make the proofs. And when we saw the proofs, we thought, oh, that shot's really neat. Why don't we blow one of the shots up and send it up to Motown and see what they think of this one along with the proofs. Well, I wasn't sure how Motown would take this shot, you know, because Diana, everybody's used to seeing Diana with evening gowns and, you know, fast, expensive clothes. And so uh, about two weeks went by. We sent this picture up to Motown framed and all really nice. And we got a call and they said, Mr. Gordy wants to meet with you, Barry Gordy. And so I, um, I thought, uh oh, I, no, I was kind of naive about the whole music business and Motown and all that. So I, I got in my car, drove up to the Motown compound. Now, the Motown compound was very famous. It had its own uh, ballroom and uh, bowling alley. And this is where the Michael Jackson and everybody all got their training with wonderful choreographers and things. So I was met at the door by a wonderful woman. Her name was Suzanne de Paris. Some of you know who Suzanne is. Now she's a very famous producer now, but she was Barry Gordy's assistant. And she sat me down and sort of interrogated me. I wanted to see what my trip was, you know. So, okay. So I tried to be as cordial and diplomatic as I could possibly be. She said, Mr. Gordy wants you to come in to the conference room and wants to meet with you with the board of directors of Motown. I thought, oh, really? And so they walked me into this big room and there was a big conference table and there were 12 guys around the conference table. I thought, oh, now what's gonna happen now? And so, so um, I, st I stood up cordially, you know, properly and then Mr. Gordy came in, Barry Gordy came in and said, hello, Harry, how you doing? You know, it's old times, you know, stuff like that. And he said, this picture, by the way, was framed now, the one that we sent to Motown. It was sitting in the middle of the conference table, big as you please, with 12 guys sitting around. The, uh, 
And I thought either I was going to get reprimanded or I was going to get complimented. I had no idea. So Mr. Gordy, Barry Gordy, said, uh, Harry, we really like this picture, but you got to tell us why did you do this picture? And I went, oh my God, why did you? <laughs> It was just sort of an accident, you know, and I just sat her down to click, 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 click. And he said, we really like this picture, but tell us more why you did it. I said, well, you know, Diana has been wearing the evening gowns and doing all these, you know, real fancies. I thought maybe she should do a shot where the community could kind of relate to it, like she's one of us and all that. He, and Barry said, there, you hit the nail on the head. And then he sort of reprimanded the men, other members of the, um, the board. He said, that's what we got to do, is start coming up with really good ideas for Diana, different things for, of her, okay? And so I thought, when I looked around, I thought, I don't know uh, if, I, if this is working very well for the board of directors. So, I said, so Mr. Gordy said, thank you very much for coming up. We're going to do an album cover and we'll see you again on another shooting. So I thought, well, I guess it was a success. And then I was pretty happy with that meeting, you know? So next thing you know, they were printing an album cover. They wanted me to go up to the printer and see it. And so I went on um, uh, wondering when I was going to do another shooting session with Diana, but I never got a call again from Motown Records. This was kind of like, the beginning of the end of my relationship with them. And the story gets more and more complicated. But what um, I can tell you more though, out of the, her sessions, I, um, they derived all these album covers from the first shots that I did in the beginning of the sessions and just many, many album covers, which a lot of you may know about. This is the one taken from that that black and white shot. And uh, this is a shot taken from another session I did with Diana. We did outdoors. This is a subject for another episode of my shootings with Diana Ross, the, the outdoor shoot and the experimental stuff. Um, this is, they did, took some black and whites and made them into color. This was another one, kind of like a glamour one. You might all know uh, Diana in that kind of a spacey outfit. And this is the album cover that they finally did. So that was, the, my relationship with Diana was really wonderful at Motown, but I never heard from them for, or Diana for a few more years until I got in, into some other studios. And so, um, I learned that maybe taking chances may be um, opportune and, and work out for the best. But in this particular case, I don't know if it worked or not. It became a billboard on Sunset Boulevard. And the subject was there's thousands of starving Biafran children in Africa. And Diana just wanted to make an impact on the public that we should be more aware of them. And anyway, that turned out to be successful in a way, but not successful in other ways. So, but now I went on uh, after that and we did other sessions with Diana that were back in other studios that I had. And that was my relationship with Diana was, and it still is really wonderful. And so um, the, what we're going to, um, Suzanne DePass, by the way, went on to, on to produce a lot of uh, acts like the Jackson 5 and all that. And Barry Gordy left um, Motown Records. Uh, and uh, uh, I went on with, with other studios and had, fortunately, Diana would come in by herself without Barry Gordy. We did a lot of other great shoots with her. So anyway, thank you very much for pay, uh, this, staying with me on this session. This was a great one, and I love it when you uh, give me a thumbs up and, <laughs> and also <laughs> subscribe to my uh, channel. 
and uh, also um, it mentioned uh, comments on my pictures. I always enjoy that, and it motivates me to do more and more sessions like this. There's going to be a couple more on Diana, so look forward to seeing those. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye.